the Constitution guarantees equal rights to women in its Article 2534 by stating that it is incorrect to blame for the unequal rights of women in Pakistan. Then there is a hadith saying of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, it is compulsory for both men and women to seek knowledge. And then it is a proven fact that if you educate a woman, you educate her next generation. The education of women in Pakistan is perplexing. Women generally do not have equal access to education and parents deem it fit as girls are believed to take care of the household and they see no point in educating them. But changing times have increased the importance of education even in the rural areas. It is evident from Nazanin's story. She completed her education from her village and later went to Abbottabad to do her degree in law. And one fine day, as she caught a side of the advertisement for induction of females in the army, her dream surfaced once again. She was determined to appear in the test with full passion and the belief that she will accomplish her vision of being in the army. Women in Pakistan are at par with men now. The transformation and development of women's role in our society has begun. Police, Army, Navy, Air Force were a domain of men only. Now we have women as sailors, as army personnel, as police officers and pilots. Women have proved that they require the same training as men to perform as well as men in all fields. The change has to be in the mindset, the approach and outlook. It is an obsolete phenomenon that women are the weaker sex. The need of the R is to absorb women as equals in the worlds of government, corporate and private sectors. And here we have Dr. Shamshad Akhtar, Governor State Bank of Pakistan. She is the 14th Governor and the first woman governor of the state bank since its inception in 1948 and carries the view that women once equal to men have become his superior. It has to be acknowledged that sex discrimination actually does exist in international um, organization as well as national organization not as per se typical to Pakistan. I think the issue of um, difficulties between male and female colleagues arise for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is uh, simply because women tend to provide a very competitive atmosphere to men. So men do get threatened when women professionals are good. The resentment among men only arose when you performed above them. If you were subservient to them or if, or if you performed below them, uh, they had no difficulty accepting you. Now it is universally accepted that no country can sustain prosperity if nearly half of its population is neglected and diverted from the national development process. Major General Shahida is a medical practitioner in the armed forces, a committed pediatrician and a meticulous expert at her work. And for her, empowerment has a untypical implication. Her rank has nothing to do with it, as her competency speaks out. In simple terms, I would think that empowerment means that you can do the things that you like, which you think are right, that you can stop the things which you think are wrong and which you do not like. Basically, this is empowerment. In the armed forces, it was a tradition that women could only join in the medical corps. And it is here that we have seen women excelling. Captain Nahid Akhtar is a dentist in the Navy who is shining out in her field and is now heading the dentistry department in the Naval Headquarters. 
she feels empowered. Trends are changing now. Other than Medical Corps, Air Force took the lead with induction of female fighter pilots just four years ago. And they are performing their duties in logistics and air traffic control as well. Women in Navy are in sensitive positions like that of being in the control room and teaching. These teachers are the ones who train the sailors to have a smooth sail in rough waters.